You've probably held plenty of paper graphic organizers in your hand, but let's take a look at some digital options, including mind maps and interactive experiences for students. Hi there, and thank you for joining me for this video. If we haven't met before, my name is Monica Burns. I'm an ed tech and curriculum consultant. I'm the founder of classtechtips.com, a blog full of ed tech tips, and the host of the Easy Ed Tech podcast. Let's dive into this video together. From Venn diagrams to T-charts, there are many different types of graphic organizers that you might come across during a school day. These are wonderful tools to help students organize their thinking, put things into categories, make connections, and graphic organizers are important research tools too to help students gather pieces of information, details that they want to keep organized and collected in one place. Now, an interactive graphic organizer, a digital graphic organizer, takes those best practices, those wonderful things about being on paper and pencil, and brings it into a digital space. With a digital graphic organizer, there is some flexibility thanks to interactive features. Let's take a look at some of the interactive features I'm talking about here in graphic organizers using one of my go-to favorite tools called Google Jamboard. It will help illustrate some of the concepts I'm talking about here that make a digital graphic organizer extra special. So here I am at Jamboard going to jamboard.google.com to start my own jam, like you see here on the screen. Now this isn't the only space you can go to for interactive graphic organizers or a graphic organizer you create in a digital space, but it definitely is a popular one and it is free to use. As you can see from my little avatar up here in the top right hand corner, I'm already logged into my Google account. As I'm working in this space, I can organize my thinking in a few different ways. Let's imagine that we are doing a research project and we are going to talk all about sharks. Well, I might put the term sharks right here in the middle. I may make this a little bit bigger and place it in the center of my screen. Now, as I get ready to conduct some research, just like your students might conduct research about different animals, they can create different spaces to organize all of the fun facts or information that they learn. I've got one circle here. I'm actually gonna change this to blue. And because I think the size is just right for me today, I'm going to duplicate this and make a few more just to set myself up. What's great about an interactive or digital graphic organizer like this one is you can make changes, move things around as you work. Now for this one over here, I might decide that this is where I'm going to put some information about where sharks live. What I've set up here in this start to the demo is a mind map or a collection of information all about one topic. What's great about doing this in a digital format is that there isn't just one way to organize information. You can model for students, show them how you think aloud and make decisions as you create a mind map or collection of information in this digital graphic organizer. Let's jump back in and take this to uh, another level. Now you might have students add labels that go along with these. Perhaps one of these is going to be all about habitat and you are going to have students put information on the habitat where sharks live in this particular circle. You might have them as they take on this task of researching and learning about sharks, add some sticky notes. So they might learn that sharks live in the ocean and make a sticky note that they place right on top of their habitat area. The idea here is that they're organizing information and that they're making connections. So you might even have them use a pen tool, uh, choosing a color to write or make some connections to different areas as they work and conduct their research. 
The great thing about being in an interactive space like this one is that there isn't just one way to use it. So it's important to model for students not only how to use and press on all the buttons, but how they might go about putting information onto their page. So just like I clicked and added a detail about the ocean habitat of sharks, you might have them go through and work together with you on a first go of it as you explore a digital space for organizing thinking. You might model and show a few different strategies, and then you might let students loose with an opportunity for some feedback and sharing what it is that they've done so far with a partner or a classmate. So a mind map is essentially a visual representation of information. Students can decide how they want to organize their information, and the organization of that information happens visually, sometimes using shapes or colors to connect different ideas together. Students might decide to even put some lines or arrows to show how two pieces of information um, might have something in common. Now, a traditional graphic organizer is wonderful, but a digital graphic organizer provides more flexibility for putting information together. It can be a more powerful and versatile tool than a one-size-fits-all approach that you might find when students are working in a traditional paper and pencil environment. So let's review some of the benefits of bringing students into an interactive space to create a mind map or to use a digital graphic organizer. First up is the ability to pick and choose from different interactive features to create a mind map that is just right for them. You might have some students that prefer to use the pen tool to draw to capture their thinking. You might have students that are more comfortable adding some quick shapes to put information into different buckets or to different categories. Another reason why this might be a useful space for your students is the ability to group categorize and color code. So imagine you have students who are collecting different pieces of information and they put everything in one category into a blue pile of index cards or into a blue box here on their digital screen. They can click and they can change up colors. They can move around information so it fits into the same category and they can make these changes as they are working within an interactive space. Another reason why this might be a useful type of experience for your students, bringing them into a digital mind map or graphic organizer, is because they can work through in a way that is best for them. This might include encouraging students to use sticky notes. Perhaps you ask them to put just a collection of single words on several sticky notes to move their uh, thoughts and their research around on the page. Perhaps you encourage some students to use the text tool and the voice to text perhaps built into a keyboard they are using. There are many different options for what they might do within one of these spaces. Making a plan, gathering information, organizing research are skills that are part of student experiences inside the classroom in every subject area. You might have students who are pulling together ideas as they form an hypothesis for a science experiment. You might have students who are doing research on a topic and are gathering all of their inquiry questions before deciding on what they're going to dive into a little bit more deeply. And you may have students that are working together. They are researching a similar topic, gathering all of their information in one space, and a collaborative tool like Jamboard from Google may be particularly useful for students who are working in a space where they are creating a mind map and organizing their thinking, but are leaning into a collaborative experience as well and relying on some of their classmates to contribute to a mind map or a graphic organizer that they are working on. So if you're ready to try out mind maps and use graphic organizers with students this year, make sure to examine the features that make it special, that provide an extra value add for students as they work in digital spaces. Provide opportunities for students to work in a way that is best for them. This might include a connect connection to your differentiated instruction goals. And if your students are ready for it, enable collaboration, encourage students to work together in these spaces to gather information, organize details, 
bring all their research into one place. Regardless of what your primary goal might be from an academic perspective, these mind mapping opportunities give students a lot of value that they can bring into experiences outside of the classroom.